Hey guys, Thunder E here and welcome to my AMD 3300X $600 gaming PC build. Now, this is a great way to build a PC of your dreams without spending a lot of money, but before we go ahead and do that, don't forget to enter into our giveaway. We're giving away three iPhone SEs on the channel. So use the link down below in the description to enter. Uh, so you, you've got a few more days to do this and you enter to win. But anyway, without wasting any more time, let's start some building. So AMD reached out and said, hey, look, we are releasing a brand new processor and actually two of them. I'm talking about the AMD 33, uh, 3100 and the 3300X. These are Ryzen 3 processors, third generation Ryzen. Uh, and these are similar to the like uh, Core i3 and a uh, low end Core i5 in terms of just comparability. They're both four core processors, of course, 65 watts. Uh, now they do both come with the rate uh, stealth um, CPU cooler, but I was sent this from AMD, so I didn't get the cooler itself, but just letting you know that's the case. Now, the difference here is the 3100 is 99 bucks. The 3300, which we'll be using in this video, is 129. That should give you better uh, balance in terms of bottlenecks when you're thinking of improving, say, your graphics card down the line. Now, next up, what we definitely need is storage. Now, this is where you can actually manipulate the pricing of this build. So we went with a Samsung, um, storage kit here, which is basically about, it does about five to 600 megabits per second. And this MVME here is priced at $69. You can go uh, with something a little bit cheaper from ADATA, which is about 49, and there are cheaper versions out there. But I like to use an MVME because my motherboard supports it, and it has better read and write speeds. Well, you can go a little bit higher with the 970 EVO, which is about $99 for again, 256. But I'm using 256 gigabytes of storage in this build. Now, my RAM is from Kingston, and that is the Kingston Fury. Uh, it's a 16 gigabyte module. You can, of course, get a, a dual SIM module if you want to, but that's what I had around here since, of course, we're in the lockdown, and hopefully you guys are staying safe. And um, uh, it's also cost-effective. I think it's about $69 or so. Now, my graphics card is the XFX uh, 5500 XT. This is uh, the low-end uh, new Radeon graphics card, and this retails for, I believe, only $199, I believe, or so. You can go with something cheaper, but I want to go with current, um, current hardware from AMD on this one. Now, my motherboard is the, it's the Gigabyte B450M series motherboard. Now, this is a micro ATX board, and this board is really solid support. So, of course, it's got built-in graphics if you need that. It supports AM4. Now, you do, one thing to mention with this brand new chips from AMD, they support, they all support PCI 4.0. Now, this board does not, but the new B550 series does, and it wasn't, it's not, wasn't available yet for this build, so I went with the B450. Again, this is also really relatively cheap motherboard around $72 or so, so the pricing there, again, is low. Now, finally, we round everything up with the Cooler Master case. This is the Cooler Master, uh, this is the Master Q300L, I believe. Micro ATX case, it's a nice, simple case. Uh, you've got, of course, mesh around for, uh, filtering dust, uh, it's got a nice space for your power supply. And the power supply we're using here is a Thermaltake 500 watt power supply. This is not a modular power supply, but since we're not doing too much, this should be fine with our build. So let's go ahead and start building this thing. Now, the very first thing you wanna do is install your um, your storage. It's pretty easy with the MVME. You just basically screw it in, boom, you're good to go. Next up, of course, you wanna put in your RAM. That's also pretty easy as well. Slide into one of the RAM slots and then you are good to go. Now, next up, we're putting in our CPU. We're using the 3300X CPU in there. Boom, in place, it's good to go. On top of that, we're going to now put in our Wraith cooler. This is the Wraith Max. I have that in-house here, but of course it comes with Wraith Stealth. So you don't have to buy a cooling solution, but we'll see what temperatures land with this build. Once you put that on there, you are good to go to mount this into your case. And in the case, of course, that's our Cooler Master case. Everything's on our Gigabyte board. And we're gonna go ahead and attach that and put that into our case. Snap fingers, boom, there it is. So we have that in our, our build, we're ready to go. Finally, we're adding, of course, our graphics card and then put in our power supply to connect everything through. And we finally have our build. Now, you guys have seen a lot of build videos, which is why I'm kind of just kind of breezing past this because I want to get into what this 
brand new processor brings to the table. So what does it do benchmark wise? So we went and did a Cinebench 20 test on this. And surprisingly, this came uh, slightly behind a Core i7-7700X. So this is closer to a Core i7 than a Core i5 or even a Core i3 for that matter. So uh, this is actually truly impressive for the kind of price point you're getting and the performance you're, you're doing with this. Again, this is paired with the XFX 5500 XT. So you're looking at a budget uh, device that really pairs quite well. Now, when it comes to gaming performance and sitting down and playing games, that's what we really care about with this in the first place, how this is actually handled. So we're looking at games like Tomb Raider, for instance, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, um, doing, of course, the inbuilt benchmark test there. We see it very left and right from about low 50s all the way to about 90 frames per second, all at 1080p high settings on the game. And if I look at the final answers, we see our average FPS is 53 frames per second at high, which is good. So it means we can play this game well and it loads and runs pretty well. Now, of course, you know I've been playing a lot of Call of Duty Warzone. A lot of people play playing Warzone. So this is a machine that definitely should be able to get me into Warzone and how does it handle with that game? So in gameplay sessions, look at what we're doing here, especially playing at high settings uh, for the game. You can see that this runs between uh, 50s, high 50s, all the way to about uh, high 80s in terms of frame rate. I'll say the average frame rate is about 69, maybe 68 frames per second. And that is really solid for playing 1080p of this game, high settings, uh, trying to get this best graphical fidelity as possible. I think this is the kind of build that a lot of people would like to see and start doing because you can you can customize where your price range wants to go. So for instance, you don't have to use an NVMe, you can use a traditional SSD, which is cheaper. You can even go down to eight gigabytes of RAM and you could go with an older graphics card, say maybe something, um, an R570 or something like that. Something that, you know, costs a little bit less that you can actually pay money for, or even a GTX 1650, uh, you know, something like that. So there are a lot of ways to go cheap on this. I just went with the whole AMD build on this. And I can tell you, you can definitely spend less than $600 building you a really solid system, especially if you already have some of the parts as well to use. So if you have any questions, any comments, let me know. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Definitely enter into our giveaway. We're giving away three iPhone SEs. Use the link down below to do that. And if you want to also customize and build your own PC, we'll have the links for you as well. This is Thunder E saying thank you and Always enjoy your entertainment.